Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the Virtual College Exploration Program brought to you jointly by the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. We are thrilled to have you with us tonight for the University of Evansville admission session. Just a few quick housekeeping items before I turn it over to the presenters. Uh, the first item is how do you ask questions? Uh, your camera and your microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. Um, but there is a Q&A button that you can push and uh, drop your questions into that and the presenters will be able to answer those at the end of the session. We'd also like to encourage you to sign up for more sessions. This is one of many college information sessions happening this week and next week and you can check out the schedule at that link. If you have to leave early this evening or if you want to check out any information sessions that you may have missed, the session will be recorded and you can also check it out in about a week or so at this link. Now I'm going to turn it over to Heather uh, to share with you more about the University of Evansville. All right. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here today. And I am, my name's Heather Cook, and I'm an admission, an admission counselor here at the University of Evansville. And I have two um, wonderful people that decided to join me today. So I'm very excited about that. We have one of our professors, um, Dr. Payal Patel Davotabak. I knew I was going to mess that up, but she goes by Dr. PD to her students, so um, I'll go with that with an easy one. And then we have um, Kinley Meeker. She's one of our current students, so um, they're going to talk a little bit later. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about UE, and I'm going to let my, share my screen real quick with you all. All right, so... Here we go. We're at the University of Evansville and so some fast facts. Um, I don't know how much you all know about the University of Evansville, but our total enrollment is just over 2,400 students. Student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1 and average class size is about 18. So what that really means for our students are is that our classes are small. You get to know your professors. You will um, you know, you'll have a relationship with them. They'll know you, even if you have one class with them, they'll probably remember you when you're walking across campus. And they're your mentors, not even while, just while you're on campus, but then well, well into the future. I hear a lot of times students still having a relationship with their professors, which I think is amazing. Students come from, I know all of you on here today are from Indiana, but our student population um, comes from 44 states and 55 countries. So we have a, a very diverse campus from all across the, the country and across the world. And I think that's really great for our students because they learn so much from each other. And that's your, you know, those are your connections that you make with those students and you're going to learn so much and just have those great relationships. So we really enjoy that, uh, but we love our students from Indiana too. So definitely um, want you all to attend as well. Lots of opportunities for internships, re research, co-ops, all of those things. So we might be small, but I like to say we are very mighty. We have lots of opportunities and um, because you know people, they are here, you know, the professors are gonna help you find those opportunities, which I think is really great. Um, it's kind of like you design your path at UE. We also have direct entry opportunities for nursing, athletic training, physical therapy, physician assistant, and um, we have the baccalaureate to medical doctor as well, B to MD, that's for just Indiana students as well. And we are um, a division, NCAA division one school with 17 athletic teams. So we're one of the smaller schools um, that can tout that we have a division one as well. So if you enjoy cheering on um, your sports teams, then you will be able to do that as well. Academic programs, we have over 80 different majors on campus, and this is a slide that kind of shows you some of those things. This is all on our website, so don't feel like you have to kind of search through all of them. I just like to show that we have uh, all the different majors listed there. We also have an amazing opportunity to study abroad. So um, that is something that I know our students love. We actually have a campus in England called Harlexton College. It's in Grantham, England, and you can see on the map, it's about an hour, um, hour train ride north of London. So very easy to get back and forth down to London and go all over the world while you're there. The tuition, housing, and meals are the same cost. 
and your scholarship and financial aid go with you while you're there. So basically the same cost except for any travel there and back and any travel you do throughout your time in um, Harlixton. And three-day weekends are built for travel. So every weekend you have a three-day weekend so that you can really kind of explore and see everything that you that you want while you're there. And it's the opportunities are really endless, so it's wonderful. There is actually also internships available over there too. So that's another different opportunity that's there. And all majors can go. So I think that's something I always like to really let students know, this is something you can do. It's not for just a certain population, it is for every single student. You can do a full fall or full spring semester, which I would definitely encourage. Or if it doesn't work out, you can always do a five week summer session. So there is an opportunity for every student and some majors, uh, some different travel will do like a 10 day trip over. So if you're really nervous about going for the full time, then there are different options. But I definitely think that you would love to study abroad there. And it was, it's a hundred room Victorian manor house. It wasn't built in the time of castle of a castle, but our students call it a castle. So basically you can, if you'd like to. Residency, we do have a two year residency requirement at the University of Evansville uh, if you don't live at home locally and live at home with your family. So campus housing, most of our first two year students will live in the residence halls, uh, but we do have some exciting news. We're building some new um, halls here next year. So that's gonna be wonderful. And then at upperclassmen, you can live in the villages, there's townhomes, apartments. Um, North Hall, which is a suite style residence hall. So lots of different opportunities there. And then plenty of campus dining. We have a cafe court, which is kind of like a cafe court in the mall. Um, we also have Rodemaker's Cafe that serves Starbucks coffee, which that's always really popular with students. And we do have a Chick-fil-A on campus. So yes, I know that is a very, very popular one. As far as activities, again, we are a small university, but opportunities are endless at UE. So we have over 130 student organizations on campus that include you know, community service opportunities, leadership development, um, Greek life, we're about 24, 25% Greek affiliated. We do have intramurals, so I know we are division one athletics, but if you want to continue on and you're not really wanting to play at that level, then, um, plenty of opportunities to get involved in intramurals. And these are just a few of them. All majors have different organizations to get involved in. And there's even a ballroom dancing club and um, a venturing crew if you like the outdoors. So plenty to find um, to keep yourself busy while you're at UE. Student resources, um, you know, we have lots of opportunities to help students because that's why we're here. We're, you know, we're a university, we're here for our students. You know, the Center for Career Development, a couple to highlight, Center for Career Development is one I'd always highlight. Um, it's something that you should look at all four years. You know, they can help you from everything from helping you figure out your major to resume building, helping you find internships, and then, you know, in the long run, helping you find that your career and your your job once you leave the University of Evansville. So very important. They help you with mock interviews, all kinds of things that they do there. Of course, um, you know, the writing center, tutoring, academic coaching. So those are some things that we really encourage our students to use, especially if you need some help in certain areas, writing or in, in other things. Also, the academic coaches do a great thing and help with like time management, or study skills, different things like that. So lots of different opportunities and um, resources for our students to take advantage of. So we really encourage that. And then a little bit about Evansville. So some of you might not know, may have never been to Evansville, or maybe you are familiar with Evansville, Indiana. So we are, you saw on that first map, we're the very bottom of the state in that um, southwestern corner. We're very close to Illinois and Kentucky, and, uh, but we are the third largest city in Indiana. So there are plenty of things to do, and I grabbed a couple things to highlight here. This is typically our very first week of October. This is the fall festival, and we had to miss it this year, obviously, due to COVID, but it's the second largest street carnival next to Mardi Gras fun fact, and it's a bunch of nonprofit organizations that set up booths and they sell all kinds of fried and crazy food items. I know if you ask my stepson, the donut bake 
burger, donut burger is the thing he was missing most um, that he didn't get to have, but it does help the nonprofits in the community, which is amazing. Uh, I know our students love to go down for that. So I know we were all missing it this year. It's eight minutes from campus. We also have, uh, we have an ice skating rink that's four minutes from campus. We do have a zoo, the Mesker Park Zoo here in Evansville, which is 12 minutes from campus. And we do have um, a mall, of course, about 10 minutes from campus and food, um, many restaurants and things very, very close to campus as well. So lots of different opportunities and things to do, plus outdoor activities um, and sporting activities and just anything you can imagine we we have so that's the start of the program i wanted to just kind of focus on ue a little bit and um, evansville but now i'm going to actually hand it over to dr patel and we'll let her tell you from her point of view and faculty point of view and give you some insights um, on the university Hello everyone, um, and I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on what Heather was talking about regarding things to do in Evansville. One of my favorite things are coffee shops, and we have a lot of cool coffee shops. Um, one is Honeymoon, which is right next to the university. Uh, we have Parlor Donuts. They make the coolest donut slash croissants, and so I know a lot of students like to go to coffee shops to study and just have a good cup of coffee or a latte, so that's really another advantage of Evansville. And so my name is Dr. Patel de Vlachabadi. I go by Dr. PD just because it's much easier on students. Um, I teach in the public health program. So I'm over the entire public health program. Um, we have a bachelor's and a master's degree. And um, I just wanted to provide you with some points from the faculty perspective. And I know students always like to hear um, from faculty and their viewpoint and kind of just what life is like at the University of Evansville. What I can say personally, I've been working at UE for about 10 years. I just started my 10th year this year. Uh, so almost an entire decade. And UE really is more of a family oriented environment. You're not really a number in our classes. Our class sizes are fairly small, most of them. Um, the larger classes are really those science courses like anatomy and physiology that many students have to take, but most class sizes, um, 15 to 20 students. And so we know each student by name, really get to know our students in our classes, and uh, we know our advisees. So you can't really register for courses unless you meet with your advisor. So we go through your schedule, we make sure you're taking the right courses, you're staying on track. And so I advise about 65 students, and I know each of my advisees, I know exactly what track they're on. I know if they're pre-physical therapy or pre-PA. Um, so I really get to know my students and kind of what path they want to pursue. Um, one of the unique aspects about the University of Evansville is that most students are required to do an internship. And so we really work with our students to help them find the internship that's really right for them and something that they're really interested in and that they're going to gain the most out of. And for some of our students, the internship oftentimes lead to places of employment. So it ends up becoming their job. So I really work with my students um, if they're interested in working in the area of nutrition or if they're interested in working with infectious diseases. I really help them try to find the perfect internship for them to gain that practical experience and make the most out of it. Because you really need that practical experience to apply after you graduate. And so that's really an, a unique aspect um, at UE. Another thing is that a lot of our faculty really engage students in research activities, especially at the undergraduate level. Now you will not find this at your larger institutions. You either have to be a graduate student or oftentimes enrolled in a PhD program in order to fully engage in research with a faculty member. We engage our undergraduate students in research. Um, I have taken many students to international conferences where they've presented their research. Many of my students as juniors have published papers in very reputable journals. And this is very rare. And this, this is very highly looked upon 
when a student applies for a job after graduation because it shows an employer that, hey, this student is able to critically and analytically um, look at data and analyze information. And so our goal as faculty is really, we wanna see you succeed. That is our end goal. We want to see you succeed in your courses. We want to see you succeed in your job and whatever your end goal may be. Um, I always like to provide an example of a student of mine. I guess he was a student of mine about six years ago. He always, his dream was to intern at the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So there was an internship opportunity with the CDC. Um, many of you know that is the public health lead organization and agency. And um, there was a specific internship opportunity. They usually receive about 40,000 applicants for this internship and he wanted to apply. And so we worked on his application together on his cover letter. I wrote him a letter of recommendation. Uh, a few other elements were required to apply for this internship. And out of those 40,000, the CDC only chose 20 students. And he was one of the students that was chosen. He represented UE um, at the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, he worked at the CDC for an entire summer. And um, it was just an amazing experience for him. So I always give this example because we faculty, again, we want to see you succeed and we'll work with you. Um, no dream is impossible. I mean, he thought this was going to be impossible and it wasn't. Uh, he achieved it. And so it's, it's very important to know that as students, we're here to help. We really approach faculty. Um, we're, our doors are usually always open. Um, this semester is kind of unique because of COVID. Some faculty are working from home, but in normal circumstances, faculty doors are usually open. We have students stopping by to ask questions or really just to say hi. Um, so it's just, we're here to help, we're here to engage you, and, and we're, we're here to really see you succeed. And so that's really kind of a viewpoint from a faculty member. Um, and I also kind of like to elaborate on courses. Um, many of our courses are designed to engage you as a student. So you typically won't find, hey, here's a PowerPoint and we're gonna lecture off of a PowerPoint. Yes, that may be the case in some cases, in some classes, but in many classes, we want to engage you. We want to see how well you do in discussions. We want to see how well you do in group work. Are you able to work as a team? Are you able to work independently? Are you able to lead a group? Um, are you able to critically and analytically um, respond to questions? And so we really incorporate all of those different types of things in our classes. We try to do some really cool, unique things. Um, technology is ever evolving. So we try to incorporate the most updated technology in our classes. And even with COVID, a lot of our classes are online, but it's not just, hey, here's a PowerPoint online, you know, go over it and then you're gonna have a quiz on it. We meet with our classes on Zoom. We incorporate certain technologies like Panopto, to engage students. Um, in, in my program, the Masters of Public Health program is a fully online program. And so I teach a lot of online courses. But I incorporate various elements into those courses to mimic a, an, an in-classroom environment. So it's important that students know each other or when they're working together, even if it is a fully online course. And in one of my courses, my students are currently working on a survey that they're gonna distribute to the entire student body. It's actually two different surveys. And so this is more of a research-based class. They're gonna collect data, they're gonna analyze data. And the end goal of this class being that they end up publishing a few papers out of it. And so um, again, we're here to help and uh, we're here to see you succeed. And um, if you have any questions at all, my email is pp42 at evansville.edu, which is listed on this slide please feel free to email me and I'd be happy to answer anything for you. All right, thank you very much. All right, definitely. And if you have any questions right now, the Q&A is still open. So make sure you ask the Q&A, um, ask any questions you have on there. So next, we're going to let Kenley Meeker, uh, one of our students, talk to you a little bit about being a student on campus, student life, and she's gonna tell you 
all about different things that, that I wouldn't be able to tell you about because I don't live on campus, but she's going to be able to do that. And again, the Q&A, we can definitely answer questions. So Kenley, I will turn it over to you. Hi guys. Um, so I'm Kenley, like Heather said, um, a little bit about me. I know you guys are all from Indiana. I'm one of those out of state people. So I'm from Southern Illinois. Um, I'm actually just outside St. Louis, Missouri, um, just as like kind of a pinpoint for reference. I'm a senior this year, which is super crazy to think about. I felt like I was in you guys' shoes like yesterday, but um, time flies when you're having fun. So um, I'm a senior and I'm a history education major. So my I'm hoping to teach history and then I'm also um, in the School of Ed as well. So I take a lot of history courses um, and a lot of education courses as well. Uh, with that, I know um, Heather um, and Dr. Patel have talked about um, internship opportunities and I would just kind of like to mention one of those opportunities that I was able to take advantage of. So I, through the School of Education, have had countless opportunities for internships. I've done at least two internships where I was actually teaching um, as a junior, um, I didn't teach every day, but I did teach um, either portions of the lessons or there would be certain days where I taught um, the entire lessons for the day. Uh, I also did a lot of shadowing experience. So I have had plenty of exposure to the classroom at this point. Um, and I know that's a little specific to my experience, but whatever you're interested in majoring as well, uh, they definitely make sure that you have the opportunities to kind of have those hands-on learning experiences. Um, another opportunity I really loved during my time at UE is the student organizations that I'm involved with. So my personal favorite is admission ambassadors. So I got involved right off of the bat my freshman year with this organization and I give campus tours. Um, I do events like this, which I absolutely love. I really wish I could see all of you because that makes it even better. Um, but I give campus tours, do virtual visits now, um, talk with students, um, email students, different things like that. And I just love it. I've also had leadership roles in this organization since my sophomore year. So I feel like pretty early on in my college career and the le leadership roles I've had and being able to um, kind of work with my peers and other students has been absolutely amazing. Um, and I just have enjoyed it so much and it's really helped me kind of grow as a person. So if you're interested in leadership opportunities, whatever organization you're interested in, there's definitely those opportunities for you here at UE to do those kind of things. Um, I'm also involved in a couple academic organizations as well and honor societies. So if that's also something you're interested in, we definitely have that as well. Um, uh, Heather mentioned Harlickson at the very beginning of the phone call. I was lucky enough to attend Harlickson um, the summer of 2019, I believe. So the summer just worked out better um, in my schedule. I really wish I could have uh, gone for a full semester, I think that would have been amazing, but just personally for me, uh, summer worked better and I really enjoyed it. It was absolutely amazing. I went to five countries while I was there. Um, I went with two of my closest friends. So we got to um, explore England and Scotland and Ireland and France and it was just absolutely amazing and I really enjoyed it. I actually, um, just a side story, um, I, my senior year of high school uh, had a, exchange student from Sweden that stayed with me and through going to Harleston I was actually able to visit her for a whole week um, at the end after classes had finished for the summer and got to see her again and stay with her family in Stockholm where she lives and it was absolutely amazing um, and I definitely really enjoyed that experience so if that's something you're interested in definitely take advantage and like Heather said it is available to all majors and by all majors I mean all majors I have friends that are nursing that have gone. I have friends that are uh, thinking about doing PT for grad school that have gone. So even if you think that you're gonna have a major that has a really tight course schedule, but this is something you wanna do, UE will make that happen for you. Um, a little bit about campus life. So if you're interested, I know Heather talked about residence halls. Um, I lived in um, Wharton Residence Hall here on campus my freshman and sophomore years. Uh, I really loved it. I had um, a roommate that we actually met my freshman year, but she's from a town really close to where I'm from, and it was a, good, a great fit. Um, we're still really good friends today, and we live together um, in the residence halls. I was a little worried about community bathrooms, um, which I hadn't shared a bathroom with anyone until um, 
going to college besides my sister. Um, I will say the bathrooms are always absolutely spotless and we have housekeepers that come in Monday through Friday that do clean and one of the housekeepers in Morton, her name is Janice, and she is one of the most wonderful, sweetest women I have ever met in my entire life. And um, she is kind of like the residence hall mom and is always checking on everyone, making sure they're doing okay, asking how that exam went that you had this week. So um, just another kind of look into the family that Yui is that um, Dr. Patel kind of mentioned during her portion. So um, I, also lived in the villages um, last year. So those are like townhouses is kind of what they look like. So, or we have apartments as well. I lived in the townhouses. Um, you do have, it's basically a, almost like a, a mini house that you have to yourself. So you have a full kitchen and a living room. Uh, you live with three other people and you each have your own room. There's um, laundry machines um, in the house. So you have your own laundry machines that the um, four of you share. And it's super spacious, they're really nice. Um, my friends and I actually, we would, um, each of us had a day of the week that we would cook dinner. So we all had our night of the week that was designated. So we would make dinner, also kind of save the money because you only had to cook one dinner for yourself a week and then everybody kind of shared. So it worked really well. Um, and we made it, tried to make it a point when we weren't all too busy to try to sit and eat together when we could. So it was definitely um, really enjoyable to be able to live with them on campus as well. Um, does anyone have questions about campus life, events that are happening um, on campus, kind of what UE looks like um, for COVID? Because I know a lot of what we've talked about is a normal semester, but um, UE is definitely trying to still do those events on campus. I know we had a movie night out on our East Terrace lawn, which is a big, students call it the grassy knoll. So it's a giant um, kind of lawn that's on campus and we had a movie night out there that was social distance. Um, they did yoga out on the lawn the other day. Um, I know they did a bingo night um, in Ridgeway, our university center as well. So they're definitely still kind of trying to have those events um, so student organizations can keep running as well as kind of allowing students to socialize and see each other safely. So. Oh, and I was gonna give a piece of advice. So my advice would be, I mean, I want you to ask questions obviously, but I also think asking questions is super important wherever you go. And I would also say, I know that some visits are virtual right now, um, but I would try to meet with as many people on campus as you can. I know when I visited UE, I met with um, a couple different professors, um, admission staff, students. It just really helps you get a picture, a full image of what the university is gonna look like for you. Cause you wanna make sure wherever you're going is somewhere you're gonna be at home and happy in the next four years. So that would be my biggest thing. Ask questions and ask questions of as many people as you can. So if All anyone right. has other questions. Thanks, Kenley. I believe there's a question about the honors program. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, when I was talking about my students submitting surveys, those were for graduate level classes. And in, at the undergraduate level, I usually work with students, but they usually approach me saying, hey, I'm interested in this, you know, little research topic and I wanna do a study about it. You know, you wanna do it together? And so that's how we form that research opportunity. So that's actually very different from the actual honors program. In the honors program, you're actually required to do a full-blown research study um, and this is the individual level. Many of the students I work with is more of a group type of project, but you are to do something that's of interest to you under your um, honors uh, supervisor. And I've supervised uh, dozens of honors projects. Um, and then you actually carry out that full-blown study. My most recent um, advisee, she did a project that looked at the nutritional status of those living in low socioeconomic areas uh, in Evansville. And she looked at kind of food desert areas, access to food. Um, she looked at, um, she did kind of a geographic mapping of Evansville and looked at where all of the fast food areas were located. And most of them ended up being in areas where there were low socioeconomic individuals who resided there. And so um, she did a really interesting study that looked at distance from grocery stores to the homes. Was it within walking distance? What if people didn't have a car? How would they go get groceries? And so um, that type of research with the program is really comprehensive and it really, um, 
you know, it really illustrates that student's ability to complete an actual full-blown study from start to finish, and then you actually present your results at the end of that um, to faculty, to students. This is a really big event, actually, and um, anyone's invited to come watch. Even oftentimes in a regular semester, or a COVID-free semester, um, individuals from the community could come watch as well. So that's kind of the difference between the honors project and just individual projects and classes. And also I'd like to clarify that projects and classes, it really depends on what class you're taking. For public health, it's more of a, uh, a kind of a social discipline um, that focuses on just study of uh, health in the population. So there's just a lot of research opportunities involved in that specific discipline. So it's also discipline dependent, but the honors uh, courses are very different from the research that you would do um, just within any given class or just a kind of independent study type thing that you would do with a faculty member. It's much more rigorous in my opinion. Very good. Thank you for answering that. That was great. Yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the application process and some things, but definitely keep um, asking those questions because we're going to have time at the very end and we will, we will answer any of those questions that come up because we definitely want those questions that those are the more, most important things to cover the things that you are um, wanting to know about. So the application process, um, we have two different pathways for application. So we have a traditional application, as you see on the slide in front of you. It requires your official high, well, the, the application itself, your official high school transcript, um, and you'll see the things that we look at um, for the academics on your transcript. We also look for your SAT or ACT scores, either or. We do have a concordance scale that we will look at the highest, and we also super score. So if you take multiple SATs, we can super score those together, or multiple ACTs, we can super score together. So just wanted to let you know about that. Also, the essay is highly recommended, but not required, unless um, it is required for a few programs, some of those direct entry programs that I talked about, it is required, but um, for most it is not. Then we have our test optional pathway. So same thing, we need your application, we need your official high school transcript, and we look at the same thing for your transcript. And then in place of those test scores, we will require you to write an essay, a 250 to 500 word essay, and you have different prompts that you can choose from, and you, you, you would select to be test optional on your initial application for that. So if due to COVID, you haven't had a chance to take a test or you're taking a test this month, which I have many students that I've talked to are just finally getting to take a test this month of October. And some of them don't wanna wait till they get their test scores because I know it takes a while. So I've encouraged them to go ahead and apply test optionally. Um, you can submit your test scores at a later date for uh, transcript or for uh, scholarship evaluation. But if you wanna know you're accepted early on, you could go ahead and do this test optional pathway that's a great um, a great way to apply and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about submitting those test scores on my next slide here which is going to be kind of some important dates to think about so I don't know if we have juniors or seniors on the call on the um, on here today but if all seniors our application opened on August 1st and it's ready to go now juniors it will open again next August for you so it's every August 1st application opens it is free to apply to the University of Evansville, so there's no reason not to apply. And there, you can apply through our website, through our application, or you can apply through the common application if you're already applying that way. Feel free to do that. October 1st, I know that's already passed for you seniors too, so you can now file the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So you're going to hear a lot about that, seniors, that FAFSA um, you're going to hear quite a bit, but it started off October 1st, and you can file that. You'll see UE's code is on there, so make sure you submit it to the University of Evansville so that we can give you your, you know, any, any of your aid outside of scholarship comes from that. And as you will see, we give $1,000 new this year, $1,000 scholarship for sending us your FAFSA. So no reason not to file and it's extra money. So you'd just be leaving it out on the table if you don't file and send it to us. So definitely do that. November 1st is our early application, early action application deadline. That is early action, not early decision. So it's a non-binding application, 
but you will get strongest scholarship consideration if you apply by then. So I know we just have a couple weeks for that, but plenty of time to get your application in. It is an easy application. It just takes a few minutes, I promise you. And then February 1st, so like I was telling you, if you apply test optional, but then do get a chance to take an SAT or an ACT, then you are able to submit us those, that new information for us to look at for scholarship consideration. Also, if you're having a great semester this year and you're improving your GPA, you could then send us your um, transcript after the semester is complete. So in January, you could send us that if that moves your GPA up at all. And if you apply traditionally, but you take the SAT or ACT again and get a higher score, you can still submit that to us as well. So definitely get that into us. Then May 1st, seniors are going to hear a lot about this, but it's the college decision day. So it's when most students will have their decision made. Uh, some will have it made well before, but that's kind of the date that a lot of students make that final decision. At the University of Evansville, we do require a $300 non-refundable deposit to kind of start the next steps um, in the process. So that's something uh, that you will be able to work with your admission counselor throughout this and and we have great admission counselors and we all work with students from Indiana. So on our website, you can actually put in your, um, where your, your county or your high school or different things like that. And you can figure out who your admission counselor is. Tuition and financial aid. So of course, everybody wants to know costs and we understand that. So you'll see our, the total estimated costs for 2020, 2021. So the year we're in right now is just under $52,000. And you'll see it broken down with tuition fees and average housing and meals. But that is a sticker price. So that is not what anybody at the University of Evansville will pay. So we want to make sure you know that. All of our students admitted to the university will receive a scholarship. And my next uh, slide is gonna show you some more information about scholarships. But again, I can't stress enough that that is just a sticker price, so don't let that scare you. And then filing your FAFSA. So you're gonna file the 2021-2022 FAFSA. Again, you can start that for seniors this year, you can start that on October 1st, and you can file that anytime now. But you will wanna hit April 15th which is Indiana's um, FAFSA deadline. Also applying for outside scholarships, that is definitely something that you'll want to do because local communities give lots of scholarships and we will add what you're offered from an outside scholarship on top of our scholarship and financial aid. We would only take that away if basically we were paying you to go to school and that's not legal for us to do. So again, apply for everything that you can, work with your school counselor to see what's out there and what you're eligible for and make sure you do that. The average, so our freshmen this year, their average financial aid and scholarship package was just under $30,000. So you will see that a lot of our students get scholarship and financial aid and, and help them to cover the cost of tuition and fees and, and room and board. As promised, here is the scholarship information. This is a little bit new this year. You can kind of look and check, you know, find where you fall within this graph. And it is on our website as well, this chart. And you can take a picture of it if you'd like, but again, it is on our website. And you will notice that you only have to have the high school GPA or the test score. It's not an and. So for the presidential scholarship, you have to have a 4.25 GPA or higher or a 29 or higher on the ACT or a 1330 or higher on the SAT to fall within that range of 21 to $23,000. It is an academic and housing scholarship and you'll see, um, you can see where you fall. And this is where it's really important for that February 1st deadline to send new information to us because you might fall move up in this chart with new test scores or with your new GPA. We also have plenty of add-on scholarships. I want you to know about that. And those are on our website. Um, the FAFSA is one of them, but there are plenty of other ones too for you to take a look at um, also. So this is just kind of the base and then we do have the add-ons. One thing I'll just take a few real quick seconds to talk about is our ACES Opportunity Grant. So that's new for the fall of 2021 students. So seniors on the call right now. It is offered to select admitted Indiana residents based on parent adjusted income, gross income must be $50,000 or less, 
or when filing the FAFSA, your EFC must be zero. You must have a high school GPA of 3.25 or higher, and you must file that FAFSA by April 15th, 2021, and send it to the University of Evansville. The amount of the grant plus any state, federal, and other institutional aid like scholarship will then equal your uh, full-time tuition to the University of Evansville. And it does have an on-campus residency to maintain the grant unless you do live at home with family. So that is something if you have questions about, let us know. Some outcomes, you know, I'll take a look at that. 96% of our class of 2019 were employed or in graduate school within six months and just over 51,000 was their median salary. And then you can see the rankings. We have some great ones from US News and World Report, but I'll just leave those there. You can see them. The next thing, and probably the most important thing, I know Kenley talked a little bit about visiting campuses. That is so important. We are open to on-campus visitors. So uh, virtual or in person, so you can come to campus. You can meet with a professor. You can meet with an admission counselor. You can meet with study abroad. Um, you can have a campus tour. So it's a really great opportunity and I hope you can come visit. We also do have some virtual purple visit days. We have one coming up on Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Time, and then another November 5th at 6 p.m. Central Time. Now those will be, those are good sessions, so you'll learn a little bit from students and faculty and others on staff. Now the online group information session is a lot like this, so I probably wouldn't encourage you to go to that. I would do one of the uh, top two. We can also connect you with a student, and we do have some virtual parent and family um, series going on right now each month, so you can invite your parent to, um, or family to attend that, and there is our website for that. Also, follow us on social media. Um, you can check out a lot of cool things there. They post a lot during the week, so you can see, and sometimes the students take over and you get to see from the student's perspective, so that's good. And that is going to conclude. There's my information. If you have any questions after today, uh, tonight, please feel free to reach out to me. It's my office, my cell, and my email address. And even if I'm not your counselor, I can help you out and I can get you connected to who your counselor is at the University of Evansville. So I'll open it up to questions. And if you, if you uh, Dr. Patel and Kenley want to join me back on here, maybe we'll get some student questions. Anybody have anything out there? We have a couple minutes. We almost went through it all, so let's see. No? And Kenley, one question I was going to ask you is advice for someone going through the college search, and you already answered it, so great job. What about this one? I, I get this a lot, I, and both of you can, because Dr. Patel, you've been at UE for 10 years, and Kenley, you know, you're a senior. What made you choose UE? to work and to go to school? Was there something, what made it happen for you? So I can start. Um, go ahead, Ken. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I am from a fairly small town. I don't know if I mentioned, but my graduating class in high school was 38. So I'm from very small. So when looking at colleges, I knew that I wanted somewhere that I was gonna be able to build my own community. Um, and have relationships with professors and people in my classes and people in organizations and staff on campus. And that is exactly what I got at UE. And I felt that feeling as soon as I stepped on campus um, between meeting with admission staff and professors and going on a campus tour. Um, I knew that that was kind of what my home was going to look like for the next four years. And I got just by a little bit, um, my graduating class was 42, so I also grew up in a very small rural town, and I knew when it, that when I wanted to go work somewhere, I really wanted to go somewhere that had that small town feel environment, um, and also a place that really good for family at the same time, and so when I interviewed at U, I stepped Foot on campus, and I'm like, this is it. This is it. I've got to get this job. And so um, it's just, it's such a family oriented environment. Yet the city is big enough that it has everything that you want. And so um, it was just the perfect choice for me and my family. I think that is perfect. That's I've been at UE for 14 years, and that is exactly how I feel. I feel like it's a family, and I can't imagine working anywhere else. So I think that's a great way to wrap it up because I know we're hitting the time now. So
but it was great. And I want to thank everyone for attending. Um, we're so excited and we would love to hear more from you. So reach out to us anytime. We are here for you. That's what we do. We want to help you out. Thank you so much panelists. You guys did a great job. We learned a lot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen again so that we can finish up with some quick housekeeping items. Uh, thank you again for joining us tonight. We really appreciate you uh, taking your evening to learn more about UE. Um, after you close this window, you'll see a quick survey pop up and it'll be about four questions. It's very short. We would truly appreciate uh, that you give us a little bit of feedback about our virtual programs. Uh, and again, sign up for more sessions. We are offering a ton of these throughout the next two weeks. Uh, and I know college reps really want to uh, get to know you and have you get to know us as well. And then again, the recording for this session, as well as all the other sessions, will be available in about a week or so uh, at this address. All right, that's it. Thank you all so much. Hope everybody has a great night. Thank you.